this song on? Well, I'm going to work on this chicken parmesan hero with extra cheese and extra something. And hello and what is up my friends, my name is Alex and I would like to welcome you to another episode of Grass in Class. And today we're going to be taking a look at some plants that are trained and some that are not. On this side of the room we have some wedding cake and some ice cream cake that we have not done anything to them, just topped them once about a week and a half ago. And to the right side of the room, we have my favorite strain, the Sunday Driver. Now, these plants, I've spent a little bit more time on them as we topped earlier. And just about every three days or so, we come in here and we super crop these dominant branches that are sticking up. And now the difference between these two plants are almost like night and day. It's almost like all the super cropping that we're doing to the other plants are making the stems a lot thicker. Even though I have them growing under different LED lights, I've made sure to keep them rather close. This way, I would not have so much space between the nodes as they grow. Even though I have them placed around 6 to 8 inches away from the canopy, I am seeing still a lot of stretch from these wedding cake and ice cream cake. Now there are a couple of wedding cakes in this batch here, but grabbing any of these plants at random that have received the super cropping and LST techniques to them when comparing them to the ones that have not, we can see an obvious difference not only in the size of the plant, but also the thickness of the stems. Now, in the two weeks that these plants have been in this solo cup, they have been super cropped at least four to five times. And I will say this now, they have been in here a little bit longer than I would like. Usually, I only have them in the solo cup anywhere from 8 to 12 days. So on this video, we would also be doing a little bit of transplanting. However, we're only going to be transplanting the worthy plants. Those that did not make it will be eliminated from the garden. So please, I will advise you now if you do not have the stomach to turn away because we will be eliminating a lot of plants from this garden and it may be graphic. Now one thing I do every time before I transplant is to inoculate the cocoa before adding my plants. In this case, I've been using Dynomico for over two years and I found it to have great results. They actually have one of the highest concentration of beneficial fungi on the market. And since we're at it, also on this video, you're going to see one of the ways I do my IPM treatment. Since I am transplanting, I will grab this opportunity to do my pest preventative maintenance a little bit different. Since I saw a couple of thread marks on my leaves, this is the best time and one of the best ways to do it. I just sprayed this plants with pure crop one about four days ago and now I'm still noticing a couple of new marks on the leaves. This is one of the reason I chose to do it this way. I'm not gonna bite on the bay. No toxic waste. On the low what you're pitching is great. Mask on the face. Case. Watching that stuff we in shape. Shit, I go put you gon' leave. Escape. I put two million in the same. Just in case. Don't go my way. No cap. My kids gotta have money. Not just me. It's selfish. It's selfish. Ooh, I take the crown off the king like Mike the Elvis. Ooh, I take it. Ooh, the world is wild. You dying. No lie, that no hell. Ooh, your bitch wanna eat up your trip. But you can not eat. And now I don't think I have to explain why this method may have a better coverage than spraying. However, if you have any questions about it, please feel free to let me know in the comments as I answer everyone back. 
Also, if you're enjoying the content so far and would like to help out the channel, you could just hit that thumbs up button as it helps out the channel tremendously. And now that we got these girls into their one gallon pot, we can go ahead and water them thoroughly with a PPM of 600 and at a pH of 5.8. Now, once I have them underneath the light and in their spot, I will go ahead and super crop them once more and fit each individual pot into its place so that it would make a, I guess, perfect canopy with no holes. And as far as for the location of the super cropped areas where I've done to the plant, well, it could just be above or below previous spots where you have bent or stressed the plant. And now that we have this side under control, we could go ahead and take a look at the opposite side where things are a little bit more, I don't know what the word is, but here's what it looks like. And now guys, even though we did try a little bit of LST and topping on some of these plants, it did not go the way we've imagined. Sometimes we must accept the reality that strain predicts a lot of the quality the plant already has genetically inside. And some, well, they just don't like to be LST, topped, or they just don't react well. However, in the majority of the cases, having a good mother plan will definitely help you increase the chances of having better clones. Not just healthy clones that may root anywhere from 3 to 7 days, but we're also talking about the structures of the clone and how many nodes they have on the branches already by the time they get roots. Usually, with a good clone, you should have anywhere from 5 to 10 nodes giving you a solid start and a solid base to work with and potentially turn that into a high yielding plant. And now for those of you that may have a weak stomach, please turn away right now because this might be graphic for some viewers. So when I step to the high road, I see CCTV and cameras. They're going hard for the riches and fortunes. From the street vendors to the bankers, boys in blue, always looking for a problem. And now, even though it may look like I was enjoying this, I could assure you I was not. Yo, so welcome to London, fam. Bobby, here we got that in abundance, fam. Some are homeless, some are reckless. You'll get fucked if you fuck up on a London gang. It's early, they run up on your London. And now my friends, I was not about to keep on going with those plants being that I don't think I would have been satisfied with the ending yield. At the end, I would have much rather put the time and space into a plant that could potentially yield me what I would expect from it. Now, within two weeks of being in these one gallon pots and after much, much super cropping, it will then be ready to get put into its final home into this three gallon pots that I've been using for the past two years. And it is in this three gallon pots that these girls will flower. And rest assured my friend, a plant like this underneath the correct light could yield you anywhere from half a pound to three quarter pounds. If you were to veg it a little bit longer and scrog it just right, 
you might get a pound out of it. Sure, why not? And now my friends, if you're interested in growing plants similar to this ones but are struggling or don't know where to start and need a one-on-one -on -one guidance, I will be leaving my Patreon link in the description of this video. There you can stop by and check it out where I give one-on-one -on -one lessons and other benefits to my Patreon members, like giveaways and a bunch of other stuff that I do just for them. But alright my friends, I'm not going to take any more of your time because I want you to watch the rest of my videos. So until next time, this is Grass in Class signing out. Peace. I'm sorry,